two square feet. I used my forearm to measure. I think when I was alive I wore a size 12 boot. I think I read somewhere once that there was a correlation between forearm length and shoe size, but I don't think I ever checked. My memory is too hazy. I have two square feet. That is all. It's not concrete. It's not porous enough. I suspect it's marble. Though the edges of my platform bear minor cracks, the surface is smooth and uniform. And it nearly blinds me in the midday sun. There isn't a single imperfection to be found in all the limited land of my blessed universe. I have broken off all of my fingernails trying to pry pieces of the platform away at the edges. There is no purpose to that exercise. I merely had little else to do to while away my hours. Not enough room to sleep, and no cause to do much else. The nights terrify me with their silence. I appear to be stranded upon a pillar of marble. Yes, let's just say it is marble and be done with the bait. That rises out of some dark, silent ocean that simply cannot be of any earthly location. I am, by my estimate, roughly 300 yards above the water's surface, though I have no way of being certain of the distance. There are no signs of ocean life, no seagulls listing about on the air currents, no ships on the horizon. That was the first thing I noticed when I arrived. A lack of anything else. Well, the first thing that I noticed was that I was awake after dying. Once the initial shock receded, I took to surveying my surroundings and, distressingly, there wasn't much to observe. There are no waves. There is no life. I spend my time watching the sun, red, swollen, and throbbing as it traces a path through the colorless sky. It is my only companion while I am held a solitary prisoner trapped at the top of my pillar. There is no moon. There are no stars, just a velvet wall of black stretching out to eternity in every direction. Hunger is unending and thirst threatens to drive me mad, but I don't seem to be in danger of passing away a second time. The number of bloody marks I've made with my fingertips around the perimeter of the platform indicate that I've survived after death much longer than would be possible in life. I'm not sure if I should be grateful or horrified. The visitor has already appeared twice, and they implied they would return again. Our last meeting was 257 finger marks ago. I recall it was toward the end of what I think was my third month here. It was only moments after the sun dipped into the horizon that I felt someone arrive. I could feel the change in the atmosphere. After so much time alone, it was impossible not to notice. When the visitor arrived, I uncurled from my squatting position and my parched muscles ached with the effort to stand. I rubbed my eyes with a dry hand and attempted to focus on the first thing to appear before me after days of nothing but infinite blue. The visitor spoke quietly while hovering perhaps two yards from me, shimmering like gold and vibrating. Curious. Eyes like oversized pearls, glowing and intense. No mouth, but he would speak nonetheless. You're, You're looking, looking unwell. unwell. You're, You're nearly, nearly eaten up to the, the elbow. elbow. Does it Does not hurt? hurt? I have no other way to sustain myself. The hunger. My voice trails off and my eyes avoid the small pile of bones near the edge of the platform that once made up my left hand. I recommend, I recommend you pace, pace yourself. yourself. No, need no need to, to rush, rush to suffer. We have, we have no will to be, to be quite, quite yet. yet. Make, Make the best, the best of, the of the hours. hours. I have I work have yet to do here. With, with you. you. What is this place? As soon as my voice left me, the darkness had enveloped the world completely, and all I could hear was my heart beating in my ears. The visitor was gone. I make use of my tools. 
I ground the leftover bones of my hand against the marble to make utensils for carving messages. I have no paper, but I must preserve my tale if I am ever found here, in this dead and empty place. And so my flesh will serve as an account of this suffering here. The left leg is nearly covered now. I'm learning to endure the pain. But I'm not so sure as to my ultimate fate. It's clear this is some sort of trial designed to test my resilience. A kind of aquatic purgatory. I was certain I would be taken away from this place and eventually given a true eternal sentence in the afterlife, but now... Now I suspect this may be hell. And the nights are no longer silent. My pillar is cracking. <laughs>